the second game is up, guys, between 12 and Grief Pikeman in the orange, yellow, and teal here, and Expa in the red, blue, and purple here, as we call it. We have Arena, uh, the map I hate most of all, but we'll do our best uh, casting it anyway. <laughs> Lag is so bad, yeah, that happens in, in uh, team games with different locations around the world, unfortunately. But uh, they wish in the GLHF, and uh, we can appreciate that. Alright, let's introduce uh, 12 Angry Pikemen first. We have Sour Milk in the pocket this time around. They played, uh, they played the um, uh, flank uh, side of the previous game, but now in the pocket position as the Celts. Akalno, what's your favorite map? I tend to prefer the more open map, and Acropolis is uh, very high up on my list. And the more open Arabia generations are good as well. I actually have a. Uh, I'm going to run in an open maps only tournament in in um, uh, starting in February, and we've gotten lots of signups. So uh, <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. This uh, escalated that we actually have more than 180 signups talking. <laughs> so I'm not sure if I can cast all of that, but. Um, so open maps, absolutely. Acropolis and Kilimanjaro are high up there for me. Kelts pocket, fantastic siege, great boom as well, considering that they harvest uh, wood more quickly. And um, uh, but the late game siege is just awesome for Kelts. If you can get to um, siege ram, uh, wall raider combination, and halves with Kelts, for example, there's not much uh, you can do if you get to the Kelts death ball. So, great pocket save, I would say, for right now, a little bit lacking in mobility, so you will not be the one dictating when and where to take the fights with Celts. But if you are allowed the free boom, you can still be really dangerous. <laughs> I believe in you. Yeah, thanks. I'll cast as many as I can, of course. Right hand side, we have Lithuanian's flank. A save you usually see in pocket position, uh, I would say, because they have fantastic cavalry, they will get plus one attack. Per relic for the rights up to a total of plus four attack. That's where the uh, bonus caps. Uh, they also have a unique unit, the Lightis from the castles, which are seen in play occasionally because they ignore enemy melee armor. So situational unit, but could be put to great use in the right circumstances if you are able to mass them. They have a bit lower pierce armor than the paladins, though, so they aren't necessarily always viable. Akalno, are you playing this tournament? Yes, I'm playing with badly timed Gimli in uh, Division 2. And we just uh, played our game earlier. I was um, I was uh, streaming my point of view for those games as well. That was the start of my stream, so you'll find it in the VOD if you are interested. So, Lithuanians should go into cavalry here, but they have great trash options as well, so should the need for Halberdiers arise in the late game, the Lithuanians could provide those as well. They obviously also have a solid economy starting with 150 extra food, so nice and smooth transition through the ages. Whoop whoop! <laughs> whoop whoop! I don't know how to say that, but you got it. Uh, slabs on the left hand side for Halberdier Henry here. Uh, last player for the um, uh, 12 Angry Pikemen here, I'm messing up the names, but 12 Angry Pikemen's left hand flank is the Slabs. Again, a very strong Siege Sib, some of the best late game infantry in the game. Drushina, Haldadirs are champions, you don't mess around with those, they deal area damage, but that's also a pretty darn expensive technology to get, because it costs 1200 food and 800 gold or so, I think. Let me just double check. Reverse the cast. There we go. 1200 food, 500 gold. Still pretty expensive, but it has your infantry damage adjacent unit, which can be huge in the, uh, the situation against mass. Uh, when you go mass health against mass uh, cavalry, for example, that can be just huge. Now for the other team, we have uh, Matkins in the pocket as Vikings here. Also, another sieve you'd rather see on the flank sides because Vikings are an obvious um, archer civilization. 
There is one thing about Arena though that you might get to see into play here, and that is Vikings going for their strong economy in the Feudal Age and go for the Sling. So we see the wall off already here behind the stone walls. I think Matkins is planning to sling in their teammates here. So just going to secure that Vikings economy behind the walls here and uh, once to get for a rather quick field mage and start sending resources to their teammates. Uh, meanwhile, we have the right hand side. We have Franks for Fusa Wusa here. Uh, strong cavalry save, obviously. They essentially get bloodlines for free because they get plus 20% hit points on their cavalry units starting in the Feudal Age. So Franks, Lithuanians, that's an interesting combination because Franks, they have that extra HP so their Paladins are really strong, but Lithuanians with enough relics could of course uh, contest uh, Franks Paladins to some extent, nevertheless. But I think uh, looking at the way the Vikings player plays this, I think we will be seeing some slinging yeah. here, so we'll have to pay attention to that. Maybe sling the sides here, we have Cumans on the left hand side. And uh, usually you'd see Cubans going into their second Feudal Age TC and get some serious boom going. And what could also be the play here though, having a Vikings, po Vikings pocket slinging, is to sling the Cubans player to go for a traditional fast castle and get to the Castle Age caps, ramps and uh, some supportive if unit like pikes or cavalry and that could be just insanely strong against the flank if you get sling from your uh, teammate because then you'll be able to get to cap drives just like that and um, yeah could be awesome eight on berries though a real commitment to food here doesn't want to invest into farms apparently uh, going for the did push the hunt most likely here and village already in for humans here it's going for the second tc after all so maybe it's not going to be human being sling here but more of a fuel boom we have Village in for Matkins as well. Let's see what the play is going to be. Are these just for security or do we have some sneaky sling plans here? Wait. Only one on gold. Uh, rather have the two dropping another farm as well. Here come the eco upgrades. But no buildings just yet, even outposts. Maybe this is just a preemptive measure to stop any castle drops or delay in the castle drops on the pocket position. I'm not sure what the play is here. Meanwhile, we have the other players going up here. Lithuanians, barracks is up, it's going to be blacksmith stable. It's already pop castle age here for I like the jig, so I think pretty standard. And I think uh, the Franks player has something like that in mind as well, although only uh, for 50% uh, feudal age for Fusa Wusa here. Forward barracks, actually. That's uh, peculiar. We got to admire the outposts additions as well. Yeah. Matkins really doesn't want any surprises here. Commits that five stone and uh, thirty wood or whatnot to outposts just to make sure you no know, um, he will know when any action gets down on uh, his uh, side here. Let's see if any of the the. Um, Anyone on the Alec Jesus team has seen this forward production? Not really. Stable in the back. We want to hide away what we're doing here for the Lithuanians. And uh, surprise, surprise, it is a stable. <laughs> Lithuanians will for sure want to contest relics, but we have some army presence, uh, do we, on the field? Not really just yet. Stable going up for slabs as well. So I think we're going to see uh, Halvadir Henry and uh, I like the so both going for the uh, stable line units here to contest the map control and to make sure that the Lithuanian's uh, teammate is able to snag quite a few relics. No monastery just yet though, so let's see what happens. Vikings player not playing this <laughs> full feudal for now. Here comes the blacksmith. Really not sure what Matkin's plan is here. Let's see what Matkin Matkin's uh, ranking is the time. It's uh, ranked 813, so on the lower end of the ELO scale, maybe on um, on their team. But uh, that doesn't mean that they can't strategize and 
come up with some good plays here, so we'll see we'll see what they bring about here. Cast Edge well on the way for both I like to do so and how the dear Henry though and uh, meanwhile um Expo are lagging behind in the progress, uh, going for an extended fuel leech. Benbo is justified to do so with Cubans though, because you could build a seriously strong uh, boom in the fuel leech with Cubans with that second TC. And consistent production out of both TCs here is good news for Benbo. Doesn't need, really need to stress that cat leech, provided they don't get attacked in the meantime. Blacksmith Market is apt to go, so once the eco allows, we'll be seeing uh, Benbo going up as well for sure. Here's the market from the Vikings player though, so now let's uh, see what the idea is here. I'm still suspecting Sling, but um, <laughs> uh, we'll have to see. 29 villagers and pop capped for um, Matkins here now, so we'll need to rush down some houses to keep uh, production going. Cast Ledge all the way though, so it's no immediate hurry. More outposts, it's just the MBL style outpost rush here, a bit early for that maybe, but uh, that seems to be what Matkins is uh, currently going for. So we have more players uh, on the way to the cast station now, Matkins as well has the blacksmith market up and uh, Fusa Fusa roughly 50% up here, so bold production with forward here, it's like a second layer of walls here for Fusa Wusa. And let's see Fusa Wusa's rank as well. Okay, couldn't find that one, because we need a clan tag as well, and I don't have time to adjust that. But double stables suggest, uh, okay, we have some scouts investment, I can appreciate using your... Um, uh, floating resources to make some actual army for the field. Look at the numbers here. I like the Jigsaw with 6, Halvadir and Ree with 6. We're definitely going to need some army from Expa here as well. They really want their map vision down here. Matkins is in the Castle Age. Ah, rank Sauromilk. Sauromilk is 1025. Wow, that's an um, impressive. Uh, Arabia played the previous game then, I have to say, so, good job. Guarding the relics here for Matkins, they don't want to get, uh, let the, I like the GSO handle them, um, or um, get them easily. A bit of a run in here, Knights with 120 HP for both, but upgrade is in for I like the GSO, GSO. we have the Defense upgrade here, so these are fights that I like to do so should win. See, so how dear Henry 1185. Okay, so pretty solid Eloton for uh, 12 Angry High Pikeman here, as compared to Matkins in the 800 range. Not something you'd need to. Um, not something that necessarily means something on close map like Arena, though, because if you have a well executed strategy, we could still see upsets here. I have to see, uh, say, not the most. I mean, the sims are rather conventional for um, Arena, but uh, to have the less mobile sims on the pocket position, that's uh, a little bit surprising to me to see. Because um, generally we want the cavalry player in the middle, in the pocket position, because then they could run around and help either side as needed. Something which will be tougher now with them being on the flank sides instead. Military in production for Fusa Busa here as well, mainly knights. And some spears, so looking at the cleanup here actually, even without upgrades on the knights. Plus one, plus one for I like to so now. Uh, let's see the relic count. Didn't really collect any just yet. Denbo has a great boom going still though and is in the cast stage now. Uh, it's just completely walling off here. Has taken some hits to the walls but will not let the enemy in easily here. Cubans. I see a huge stone. And here is the. the the thing I was talking about. Matkins with the um, uh, extra layer of walls behind here, going for a Viking spoon, very strong economy for Vikings, but sending resources to the Franks player. 
I'm not sure if this is going to be a consistent thingy or if that was a one-time sling, but it's uh, still going to come in handy for Fusawusa to get that uh, night production rolling nice and consistently here. Good attention from Atkins to pull up the house wall behind the gate here, so I'm not going to let Halberdier Henry in easily with the knights here. <laughs> uh, defensive tower, I'm not too sure about that, so, though um, that's not going to keep the knights out. Uh, however, if you can't afford the castle, maybe that's just as well to have some extra annoyance behind the walls. It did scare away Halberdier Henry, and uh, here we have the sling going, 300 food, 200 gold sent to Fusa Wusa. So Fusa Wusa with triple stables now receiving Sting, able to go into triple stable production and um, and the upgrades here. So it seems to be working for sure because look at the numbers here 18 military now against 12 for our left jigsaw. And even though Fusa Wusa has an economy working on their own now as well, we have triple TCs. Uh, giving them those extra resources uh, in through the sling is uh, going to help out quite a, quite a bit in terms of the army production here. So um, it's it's both their own boom and slinging for Fuso Wusa. It's not usually the way it goes when you receive a sling, you uh, could just focus on army production and micro and almost not build any economy we're on early on, but here we're doing both, so maybe this is going to be o OP, who knows? But being the slinging player is always dangerous because if the opposing team realizes what you're doing, you are going to be their main target. Let's uh, have a look at Fusabusa's economy here as the sling comes in. Lots of lots of gold here, 15 gold miners though, 21 on food. Should be um, compatible to for multiple stables production. But given the sling, I'd say that uh, Franks could afford even another stable here. Especially if they didn't go into multiple TCs themselves, stay one TC, receive sling, and go five, six tables, completely madness all in. That could be an overpowering actually. Yeah. But they're taking some serious map control here now. Look at the KD as well, 22-15 for Fusa Wusa, uh, while Benbo and Matkins are untouched at home. Kipchaks, as expected from the stone investment from Benbo here secures the secondary stone and will not allow the slab knights to enter their base here. Let's look at the relic count again. So good map control for I like to do so, but uh, not good enough to uh, stop all the relics from being taken. Oops. <laughs> Yeah, not the best engagement ever for uh, Halberdier Henry there, but uh, hey, at least we're seeing some action on the field here. Who's always uh, chasing some of the um, OP Lithuanian knights here. Look at Templar's tree, that's more than any other knights will get in the Castle Age already. So now Templar's 4 even, so I think Iron Forging or another relic is in for, uh, for I like the Jigsaw here. Three relics. We see Matkins has collected one as well though. It keeps an opening behind the gate here. But uh, and Fusa Wusa snags one as well, so all in all, I'd say x is doing a good job uh, trying to keep the map control and deny relics of the Lithuanians. Sour milk with uh, full pikes now makes sense with Celts, they have faster moving infantry, so uh, Celts pikemen are something to, to look out for. Here come Benbo with the keep checks though to uh, snipe. Quite a few of the Python here, I'd say fully upgraded Python at that. Probably going to be seen in a uh, Pike and Siege push in the Imperial Age. However, it's going to be the Cubans player going to the Imperial Age first here. With 26 military to back it and a pretty darn healthy population as well. So, as opposed to the Arabia game, I like this game better in terms of military production for uh, both uh, teams here. Um, Matkins not providing much, but providing the sling, obviously, so that's uh, helping out uh, one of the teammates to provide even more army to the field. If the game goes, uh, goes long though, we'll need to see Matkins providing some army as well, because otherwise um, his teammates will be fighting against a potential larger army mass than they can bring after themselves.
are still decent engagements from the flanks here with keep tracks and camels to back it here. Uh, I don't mind seeing a few camels, but uh, Cubans, uh, Bambo, you need to remember to get your upgrades. If you want to bring uh, cavalry units to the field and you're up against Lithuanians with these kinds of upgrades, uh, and at the very least get your attack and defense upgrades <laughs> for your cavalry units. Good coordination between Bambo and, Fu and Fusa Wizzolo, I have to say. Hit and run from the Kitschaps and Matkins with the superior Viking Eco just uh, passing along uh, golds and uh, food and whatever is needed for Fusa Wizzolo to sustain consistent production here. Mangonel defense for Sour Milk. Kitschaps, they are rather weak. Uh, they have uh, um, bloodlines now though, so they get some extra HP, but still. Uh, one or two Bangalore shots and they are uh, severely damaged or dead. 50 military for Ben Bo, reaching the Imperial Age with uh, very good eco to back everything here. Looks like healthy ecos for all the players actually, but I am admittedly worried about the fact that uh, Sour Milk, the Celts pocket, has been left completely alone throughout the whole uh, game so far. Don't give Kelts a free boom, that's just uh, suicide. Here comes the university, acting as sort of a wall behind the walls here as well. And uh, probably going into the appropriate upgrades for siege units here. Uh, nice running in here, we'll need the keep checks to handle some pikes here, I would say. Uh, good choice of Twizza Wizza to pull back here. Full fights from Halberdier Henry here and a few knights uh, still left over from the Castle Age. We're going to see the Slab's infantry power here soon enough with the Imperial Age kicking in. Uh, pretty efficient eco to back everything here as well. I'm looking at the build accounts and actually it's uh, it's better for um, for ex expa here, but um, uh, still we have Alec Jigsaw providing some strong knights to the field and uh, Imperial Age just around the corner. Could mean some uh, OP initiative lids coming in too near me as they have three relics after all. Big player in the middle now, keep checks, camels, knights, all the all that gas in the middle here. 73 win through Fembo, it's incredible. And uh Fusa results with uh, 29. Frank's Knights here going into Chivalry now for uh, faster stables production as well. Only three stables to benefit from that though, but uh, Castle coming up as well for uh, map control and defensive purposes. We have Celts in the Imperial Age now though, with uh, Halberdiers on the field, only missing the Imperial Age upgrades. And a full Pike and Siege push from the Stabs on the other side. Stabs, Siege weapons are cheaper. So they certainly have an easier time sustaining double siege workshop production here and Bembo's base is about to be reached while literally all of their army is forward. And Matkins with the Berserkers here going to join in on the action, that's a great addition actually against a Python siege push. Because they could easily take out the Rams, the Berserkers, and they would easily kill Python as well. Good quick wall from Bembo, but uh, the pikes run in here, so there's still an opening, which could be crucial here. Nikola Edge right around the corner for the stab Sparrow means that Cap Ram and Seed Ram is an option. Still a very solid uh, military lead for x here, though, with the Matkins on the field as well now, providing mainly pikes and uh, Berserkers here. Bembo with a Siege Workshop in the middle of nowhere here. Not sure what the play is, maybe he wants to push on the Lithuanian player. But uh, breaching the base of Halberdier Henry here is huge. Even with 67 military for Ben Bow, in theory, uh, all of uh, Ben uh, Benbow's army here can be counted by, countered by Halberdiers. Because if the Halberdiers get uh, close enough in on the Kipchaks, they will chew them up like um, chewing up. <laughs> 92 villagers now for Bembo, going to lose uh, potentially some more here if this uh, push keeps going, but it seems to be at a halt for Halberdier Henry right now. Only 11, 10 military for Halberdier Henry and they are all halves. 
How did your Henry going for the helps? That makes sense actually. Kelts helps on the field here as well, and now uh, Lithuanians Cavalier with 12 plus 5 attack. Nothing to mess around with there. Uh, we have Imperial Age just kicking in for Fusa Musa with a good economy to uh, back this upgrade. Has the stone for another castle as well, and goes for Cavalier upgrade immediately, obviously. But. I can't help but think that um, X Fire needs some uh, better answer to the house than just the keep checks here. Maybe some uh, swordsman line units or um, skirmishers or even hand cannoneers. Onager is in for Halberdier Henry now. And uh, Onager Halb here from the stats player. I wonder if Drugina is in as well, we need to check that for Halberdier Henry. That would make sense actually with the army investment. Indeed, Drugina is in, so the Halberdiers here are going to be even more dangerous. They might actually chew up the Berserkers here because of the area damage and will definitely take out the, the camels with ease. But the uh, Onagers are going to wait here because uh, the camels are free to run in and raid here. Very little benefit from the Onagers in this matchup. And none of the players on um, Spell of Angry Pikemen are going for... I mean, none of the players on Expa are going for Archer's line units either, so I don't you know, don't love the Onigre on addition at this point. Should maybe get some uh, work some Wonders against the Kipchaks, but the Kipchaks also have an easy time dodging uh, Onigre shots. A little bit of raiding on the right hand side here from our Lithuanian friend. Uh, pretty darn even score, so 8000 against 8700 here. KD is in favor of um, then both team, uh, team Expa here, but a uh, little bit of back and forth in this arena game after all. Control Orange's economy, yes. Let's have a look at the Lithuanian player's economy. Looks decent, 27 on food, 18 on gold. That should be decent to sustain uh, the knight's um, production still, but uh, an issue will be for the late game, of course, that you are behind in villagers uh, compared to, for example, the other uh, cavalry player, the tanks player here. So ideally, when you're going between it and full uh, cavalry style play, you'd uh, want uh, more than uh, uh, more than 80, 81 villagers going into Imperial Age and absolutely not stop making them. Hey, hey, Age of Noob TV. The Viper and MBL have nothing on this Norwegian. There we go. Yes. We have another Norwegian on the Age of Empires scene now. Uh, that's me. <laughs> Thanks for the resub. I appreciate it. I'm uh, deep into casting some League, League of Empires here now. And this is the fourth division. And that's, I have to say, they're putting up so a real good show here. Some uh, quality gameplay in go both games here. And uh, my criticism or. Um, a recommendation for the both cavalry players here obviously would be just to extend the economy even more and keep making villagers like the see Fusa Busa is doing here but uh, under heavy struggles from I like the Jigsaw here so maybe I like the Jigsaw doesn't need more villagers who knows <laughs> so quite a chunk of paladins here I think this might be the end of Fusa Busa here this doesn't look too pretty uh, these 14 plus 7 between these paladins, no joke at all. And uh, the economy going down seems like they have some uh, lag issues here as well, going even in the replay. But uh, look at the villager numbers of Fusa Wisa dropping down now, trying to... I was going to say trying to escape, but they're going to try and clean this up with pikes and their old oops, cavalier here. Fortified wall on the woodland, but I think there's a hole over here, so that could be uh, could be hurtful. Uh, I like the jigsaw has dealt some serious damage now and should absolutely move on to try and hit the different player. Maybe hit the pocket this time around. There are trade cards here as well, so if you're observant, 
you could actually exploit the trade cards movement to get inside Matkins' space here. Seed Tram is in for help dear Henry though, so um, good push on both sides here for um, good um, pressure on both sides here for um, 12 angry fightmen. What's the elo range of this game? Uh, I'd say average of around 1,100. It's the lowest division, it's division 4. And I checked Matkins is 800 uh, something and we have Sour Milk in the 1,000s. So, um, like I said, they're putting up a good show here. I think the lowest and highest divisions of League of Empires um, have a huge spike in the uh, ELO range, though. I know for a fact that uh, that one of the players in the 4th division is actually in the 1400s, but then again, the rest of his team are obviously weaker, so it will never, never be perfect. Now we see Cumans with Paladins here as well. Lacking some core upgrades here, we'll need more attack and more defense. But Cumans, Paladins, and, uh, since Cumans get 5% or a total of 15% speed uh, throughout the ages for their cavalry, then Cumans, Paladins are actually, and Light Cab are actually the fastest in the game. So that uh, makes for some good raiding potential. And Benbo to some extent pushing back here, but how are they going to deal with uh, Paladin? No, oh, sorry. Slabs, Cavalier Raids and uh, maybe more Siege Ramps to push as well. Lots of back and forth in this game as, uh, as is the best tribes and games, obviously. I feel like with uh, Lithuanian Paladins on the field, Halvadir Henry should again focus more on the Halvadirs though, but uh, I can appreciate the raid potential. And... Um, also, the Berserkers on the field, maybe you'd want to add Scorpions as your best option. If you can get to Heavy Scorpion, that would be great against the infantry. Right hand side, lots of Lithuanians, 14 plus 7 Paladins here, going to go for a raid maybe on the Vikings. Uh, we see Champions as well from Matkins here, so playing heavily into the infantry play here. And look at the eco here of... Uh, I like G so heavily housed here for some reason, may have lost some castles or something. But uh, keeping it up here, and uh, we're looking at some extensive stone walls here from Sour Milk to presumably try and secure their trade route, which they are about to get up and running here, or rather extend. Matkin sticks around with the Berserkers here on the left-hand side to try and keep Benbo alive. And uh, but if I like Jigsaw breaks through here with the Paladins, this is going to be huge. Uh, kudos to Matkins for the uh, Vikings boom and the army production here though, being 800 ELO, potentially one of the lower ones in this game. The Berserkers unfortunately can cannot hold up against the cavalry, but that could be deceiving as well considering that the Vikings get a unique tech for uh, infantry dealing bonus damage to cavalry. So maybe with Berserks or Elite Berserks rather, you'd think they'd hold up nicely against uh, uh, against the uh, uh, Paladins, but these are no nobody Paladins either. They are Lithuanians with 14 plus 7. Raid is being cleared. I think there's still time for Benbo to try and uh, quick all with houses behind this. Humans, they have a bit stronger Palisades, but they don't have um, stone walls. And it's not going to happen in time, unfortunately. <laughs> there's an opening to the top side here, so. I like to do so, says you. Yeah, just walk in here. Thank you very much. Yeah, more helps are desperately needed. Halvadir Henry will have to send helps in this direction ASAP. Otherwise, Benbo is history. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this does not look good for the humans player here. We see some expansion across the map with production buildings and everything, but you cannot sustain production if. All of your town centers and builders go down, which will be the case here with this massive Paladin army. Right hand side though, we see some... Slab... Sorry, Celt champions here now, from Sour Milk. So they want to um, contest the Halberdier's addition here. So a great adaptation here from uh, 12 Angry Pikemen as well, to go into champions to deal with... Uh, Halberdier's from the ranks, which is a weird sight to be honest. 
But looking at the economy setup here as well, the trade isn't uh, kicking in um, all that much. They will be struggling a little bit for resources in the end. And for some reason, losing the hubs now will not be able to replenish them, lacking wood. Win. Uh, look at this, how the deer is just shredding away the human's economy now down to 62 villagers and massive, massive villager lead for 12 angry pikemen now. Health, heavy scorpion, I like that addition, but they are being shredded by humans like cab here now. The speedy humans like cab, keep check, still alive as well, they are elite obviously, gets another 5 HP as a result of that, and they are doing absolutely decently against uh, the halberdiers here. The economy looks worrying for Bembodo, down to 39 builders, 28 on food now for gold. Replenishing army is going to be real tough for them though now that the resources are running out. I can't help but think that uh, 12 angry pikemen have done their homework here. Ch maybe checking the elo of their opponents because they seem to be focusing heavily on then Bo here, the human player, and uh, Fusa Fusa here, the uh, cavalry player who was subject to huge raids earlier on. While leaving Batkins alone to some extent, Maxine Batkins still with great economy here. And uh, given the state of the economy, I'd say that Matkins here could consider sending quite a bit of food and wood to Ben Bodo to try and get Ben Bo back into the game, but Overall population here now, two players pop capped for 12 Angry Pike and this has to be their game. Onagers and Slav, Drusina, Halvadiers here now. Uh, even attacking the trade here a little bit, not much left of the trade routes. I think these paladins would be more useful somewhere else now, but they're trying to take, again, they're trying to, like the Arabia game, they're just going for a complete defeat of one player. <laughs> uh, previous Arabia game where we had the Mayans player totally removed from the game, and this time around it's going to be Benbow struggling to get back into it. Benbow needs to flee ASAP, otherwise they won't have any chance whatsoever to get back into the game here. Uh, the humans have a good boom early on, but uh, the reboom from this this late is not an option. We're down to 14 population for Bembo here, and the GG is called. Great game! A little bit of back and forth there, but um, Expo struggles to close it out, unfortunately. Still uh, good efforts from uh, both teams for sure, and it's going to be a 2-0 for 12 Angry Pikemen in the end. Five score between sour milk and how the how the deer be. Ah, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's cool. So browse through the stats here. Bambo with the superior KD here. I like to, to see that one. Four forty-two to four two. Matkins providing as well for sure. Largest army from the Vikings player. Lots of infantry in the play. Gets tough against, uh, uh, still gets tough against mass Lithuanian paladins though. Fantastic stabs eco here, as to be expected for their quicker farmers. And then we had the uptimes as well. Seems like I like the jigsaw has the best build going for arena here with a rather quick cast age, which is normally the go-to on arena. Six total castles for Benbow. The keep uh, did go for the keep checks, so we need the castles to produce for sure. And uh, look at the stabs boom, just insane there with 153 builders out booming every single one here. And we had some huge battle events along the way, but uh, see the especially the blue section here, Benbow, just getting totally erased from the game in the end. Great game from both parts though. Now we'll be moving on to a Division Three set.